Hello, uh, my name's Norman Murray and I'm the director of The Girl Who Fell Through the World. Um, we're here to meet Constanza Roof, who is um, one of the uh, storytellers for episode four, which is called... Hannah Gale. Hannah Gale. Uh, so tell us a little bit about... Let's talk a little bit about you first. So we were just having a conversation about your exchange programme. Over. Yeah, I came here as an exchange student in my last year in university from Chile. That's where I'm from. Um, and then I just decided to stay. Um, I, I then, years, years later, I became a circus performer. And that's another thing that I do. So when did you come over? I came here in 2005. So same, same as me. I moved to London in 2004, Yay. so it's pretty much the same. So you, you trained back home as an actor, did you? Yeah, as an actor. So we have a four-year degree, and then on my fourth year, the last semester, um, I did my dissertation, like, online, but I, I did the, uh, how do they call it here, um, the um, ensemble bit, sure. or uh, big cast sense. ensemble yeah. um, at Leeds University. And what did you do? It was a device piece, so there's not. I, I, I can't remember the name, but it was a device piece. It was quite fun. It was a device Very physical. Th very uh, physical theatre. I mean, I like Leeds. It's um, Slung Low is like one of my favourite theatre companies. I don't know if you know them. No. So they do a lot of stuff with people in Leeds and stuff as well. So uh, they've got a really good ethical idea of like developing theatre within the actual uh, town that they're a part of or the city oh, that they're a part okay. of so anyway I'm just, if you'd been there you might have met them they may not yeah. have been uh, no, right. they no. may not have been around then <laughs> um, so yeah and then so when did you move to London um, did I circus moved, come with moving to London no or? I moved to London in 2006 um, and then immediately I went straight into working full time in a restaurant to Squished pay it. my loan that's what we all do um and then no no I, I started circus only 10 years ago okay. quite old for you know because circus, most people will say, oh, the earlier, and uh, yes, it's true, the earlier you start, the better, physically. But I, I found it quite late, and I fell in love with it, so I ended up training a circus. Do you I, have a discipline, or do you have like a particular... Yeah, I'm an aerialist. You're an aerialist. I, oh, hang, I, I hang myself from things. You silks as well, is it? Yes, silks and rope. And so have you done anything... Did you do Jackson's Lane? Have you done any of those? Um, I haven't done Jackson's Lane. Um, I do lots of corporate gigs, of and... Clubs, restaurants, then corporate. Yes, <laughs> Just, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. You're still climbing, but um, I also do a lot of um, because I do physical theatre. I do a lot of circus theatre. Great. So that's 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 how I I merge them both, and that's how I like merging them. Corporates are great, but it's not as fun as circus theatre. No, no. Um, but so so tell us a little bit about this genre of circus theatre, so we can kind of get an idea. Tell, um, what's your favourite piece that you did? In, in... Um, God, I've done so. I've, I I I. I play uh, usually um, because I am a physical performer. I tend to play the creaturey character. Right, perfect. Uh, so it's like who can climb the gate? Connie, go. Um, but doing aerial, it allows you to play with an equipment while telling a story, um, and that's quite fun because then you have the height. So uh, I've done. <laughs> it's it's never a particular character. I did with Circus Mash. I did this crazy woman who would just go up and be totally disillusioned with life say like i just want to leave this world by climbing but i would always have to come down because that's how gravity works um but yeah it's, it's very entertaining I, I've, I've tried singing on the silk quite tricky um but yeah it's uh, it, it's it's good to have um something that is an obstacle when, mm. you, th when you think about it mm. but also helps you tell stories in a different way. Yeah, I think that's, for me, the interesting thing you're coming up is the difference between circus and the difference between theatre and then the idea of narrative attached yes. to circus, which actually, I always think, I always marvel at the amount of physicality there is in a circus yes. act. But there's a point as an audience member where I'm like, so I, I've seen this now, I, I want to love it again, but yeah. actually adding narrative to it gives me a whole other relook at that. And yes, I think that's really because if not... Uh, in, in for me, just for me, um, it becomes just the skill, yeah, which is incredible. Of course, it's it's absolutely mesmerizing. But if I don't have a story behind it, I get a bit like, great. But if you show me another split, I'll probably vomit. Yeah, I think you're lined up in the same way. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, see that. But some people don't see it that way, which no. is great, in, because then you have you know people that like all sort of things, which is yeah. the best. Yeah, I agree. So you um. Tell us a little bit about who. So this this story is about a ten year old girl, 
once you were a ten-year-old girl, I see. <laughs> yes. So you were back in Chile at this time. Uh, I think we talked about this in in your in when we first met. You were back in the sort of fields of Chile, and you were sort of running around. In yeah, I grew up. Fields. I grew up in a like my my house sort of led into a hill, and my garden was never really well kept until much later on. And um, I was quite small for my age, and the grass was really tall. So um, I remember just running around and sort of if I knew that my mom had made beans for dinner. I would never come back. <laughs> we just hide in the fields. Uh, we had loads of animals. My father had um, a friend who kept on lending him animals to <laughs> to heal. Okay. So whenever he had an animal that was injured, sometimes he would just my father would bring him home because we had the space. So I mean, I had toads. I had a toucan. I had parrots. Um, you had a toucan. Yeah. Don't yeah, go with that. Called, you had a toucan. Called Nicholas. Okay, he was Nicholas great. The toucan. Uh, he loved watermelon. Um, at some point we had a llama. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't think you're going to beat on the toucan. Not many people have a toucan. A no, llama, I know, I know. Um, you know. He's, he was extraordinary. Um, so um, you, you had a toucan. Let's just focus yeah. on that for a second. <laughs> just the toucan. Let's make a story about it. So well, it's one of my favorite birds. So, but you did it live in your house? Did it? No, no, no. We had we have this huge cage outside. Right. Um, because also don't forget that I had dogs and other animals. So the course, toucan yeah. might uh, and there's cats around. So. Um, so yeah, no, this huge ha- cage just for himself. Um, and the great, they um, they sort of like hop instead of walking, and they sleep with this that massive, you know, bill tucked behind their wing. Right. Um, and they would get scared. They sort of like open their beak and go like ah at night. Um, so yeah. And did, is this a? Excuse me for being a bit maybe a bit ignorant, but is that a, a bird that's indigenous to Chile? No, that is indigenous of other parts of South America. So it's sort of taking them in through the borders? And... Uh, well, that's what happens a lot in Chile. Um, animals, you know, oh, everywhere really... in the world. Just people just take them and then they right. don't know how to take care of them. And that's right. how this person la- ended up with it. And that's how I ended up with it. I so see. taking care of it. Um, so tell us a little bit about... So the, this is obviously Hanukkah, who's... who's that we, you know, there's a, it's a very strong character, a very strong female character. And when we talked in the first time we talked, what was really interesting to me was just how passionate you were about like wanting to tell that story. It was almost, you know, you were really sort of pushing that through, you know, but it's really important. This needs to be told. Like you don't understand, like, and I think I got the names wrong of a couple of things. You're like, no, no, that's not the, you know, in a good way. <laughs> it, it's it's a told. difficult name to say, especially when you don't have the. In but your... it's Ma- it's the Mapuche. Mapuche? Yeah, the Mapuche. Mapuche. So the Mapuche tr- uh, tribe from Chile. Yeah. And this is, this is um, if, excuse me again if I'm wrong, was it the 1300s? 1500s. 1500s. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the Spanish arrived in America with Christopher Columbus and then they wait, they made their way back sa- down south. Um, and they eventually reach this area where the Mapuches live. The north of Chile, all the aboriginals are very peaceful and very easily submitted not the Incas though but the Chilean ones they were until they reached the Mapuches and the Mapuches are well known for how feisty they are and the Spanish realized that they couldn't submit them and this war la- lasted 300 years 300 years yeah. yeah from when then do you know when in the 1500s or so until the 1800s when, when eventually uh, the war ended up finishing not not because of lack of fighting but uh, if I can say so there was a lot of rape um, also, alcohol. So um, they they you the Spanish brought in alcohol. Brought in alcohol, yeah. yeah so uh, a lot of the and it's something that you can see nowadays. The Mapuches that are left, some of them do have alcohol problems. Mm-hmm. Um, so they started merging as well. So because of you know they would steal the women, they would have children. Then that they became the Chilean society in the end. So I was so when you talk about the rape and the sort of but. You did, just to define the difference, there's rape, and then there was there just people getting together that wasn't rape. Um, I'm just curious well, about this. Yeah, Spanish um, well, it was it was also both ways. In the beginning, it was the Spanish just raping their slaves because yeah. yeah, they had the Mapuches a slave, whoever yeah. they stole. Uh, but also the Mapuches realized that oh, this is a thing. Then okay, we're gonna start stealing your women. So it also went that way sure. eventually. Um, but then there there was a lot of uh, well. When you're giving a, a bunch of slaves, you can do whatever you want with them. They wouldn't call it rape because, mm. you know, 
they're yours. Sure. But eventually those children uh, will become the mixed race yeah. uh, society. And, that, and those children are the ones that eventually became the class that um, threw the Spanish out. Okay, so, tell us a bit about that. Uh, so in the 1800s, when uh, all these mestizos, that we call them, they are half Spanish, half Aboriginals, or second generation uh, um, Spanish, they decided that they didn't like the Spanish very much, and they're like, oh yeah, um, I think I'm going to become an independent country. And so they kicked them out. Okay. Uh, and that's how Chile became a country. Of course, yeah. I but, didn't. But, I mean, but, I, but I still, I still, they, they, they still. Uh, um, but that is very interesting because, in spite of the fact that, uh, and I think that happens is in most countries who get invaded in one way or another, um, that the those who are submitted are in some way um, they get the feeling that they are not good enough. Sure. So, because eventually, who gets the jobs? Who gets? Who is the, the you know the upper class? The Spanish. They have the education. They have mm. the jobs. They have they, they they have everything. So, of course, for those who are always in the lower classes, they're like, I want to be like them. So they'll, however they can, they'll try to they strive for it. And what happens is that then their story, their history, becomes muddled up with shame. They don't want to be related to the Mapuches. They don't mm. want to be related to the Aboriginal roots. And so all of these stories, Hanekeo and all of the other Mapuche stories, they get lost. Mm. Because nobody wants to... I'm not going to tell my child about that woman. No, no, I'm going to tell her about the Spanish woman that saved us. And so um, that's why I'm so passionate about this story, is because we are trying to bring part of our history that we decided as a society... Sure to push down. And you were saying that the, <clears throat> there was, when you were having sort of uh, stands specifically focused on women's, women's rights, they have like the t-shirts. Yeah, so, and, so what they did, this was this incredible. Is this quite recent? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, so um, they, they made, a, as you have the Marvel Universe, mm -hmm. uh, Chile made a whole Mapu verse. So they brought all of these characters, Hanekeo, Lautaro, Caupulican, which are all Aboriginal Indians who fought like incredible battles against the Spanish. And they made a comic. And you can watch it online. It's mm. like, it's, it's incredible. And, and people started watching it and realizing, oh my God, this is incredible. And you get like five-year-old girls that instead of buying a Barbie doll, they buy a Hanekeo doll. Um, and so, um, from this comic, they, there's a very specific image of Hanekeo, and they started printing it in t-shirts. And it all came about of um, a moment of uh, women's rights, and there's, um, in, in Latin America, there's, um, women get killed a lot. Uh, there's like, last year, about 8,000 women got p killed in Mexico, right. just because they're females. Mm. And so this whole movement started going forward from Chile, and probably some people have seen it on, uh, online. There's this um, massive amount of uh, women dancing, wearing blindfolds. Yeah. That came from Chile, which is suspended all over the world. And some of them were wearing Hanekeo's T-shirt. Right. So she's become a symbol of emancipation, of, yeah. someone, who, of someone who can. Regardless of what gender you are, but because she's a female, is that we can, and and that's incredible. That means, gives me goosebumps. And also, you said that one of the things that was sort of unique about her, maybe unique. I don't maybe that's my word, but was that she she had these battles, and you bring it up in the story, and then just at the end of this story, but also plausibly the last thing we hear about her in the real world was that she just sort of decided to yeah. to vanish. She just she, she was never vanquished or. No, taken over or no she was never taken like over and 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 this is this is the thing that we don't know about her which happens to most female characters um because those who wrote the story i mean the mapuches didn't write anything because mm. they were like yeah yeah we, we do we'll pass on this for the next generation because it was an oral tradition i think that's important to pause Very. on that. so uh, like a lot of different cultures all over the world it started as a sort of oral yeah tradition to pass on the story to each other so it, it's it lives within the sort of generations as opposed to written down and can be shared just exactly who but passes a book on. if that gener if that is not passed on it dies yeah and so who wrote course, about this just going back to that then, oh, so, yeah. no no it's good because i'm just drawing lines 
so you you were talking earlier on about the shame thing as well so a lot of that was sort of being eradicated because yeah of course why know? will you tell your story about yeah. this one it's like no 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 just leave it alone yeah so those sort of old stories it's, it's are forgotten and yeah. then who wrote this the spanish did they <laughs> wrote a lot and who were the ones writing the story there were men and not only men yeah, yeah. Priests, some yeah. of them. Okay. Although we do, I have to say that some of the priests we owe a lot because some of them wrote um, about what Christopher Columbus did, and just because of his writing that we know what a sadist he was. <laughs> yeah. But um, so we we it's very specific what they write, and for example, they write about the female wife, and like, but we don't know really what they were like. No. Yeah. Um, so you sort of have to, half of it is imagination of what it was because of what we know from the Mapuches themselves nowadays. And another part is like, okay, we sort of like to start digging. It's like, what does he mean when he wrote that? Hmm. Um, so it's, it's, I don't know, I think it's very important that we try to rescue these characters and bring them into our consciousness. Yeah, I mean, you when we first met, that was one of the reasons why we yeah, sat around just, with you for a while. Yeah. <laughs> You had a really strong... Oh, I've just swallowed some pepper. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. I think I've got it. So, yeah, no, the fact that we had it... No, I'm going to have to drink some water. <laughs> if you got some water. We'll carry on talking, but if you've got some water, that'd be great. Um, uh. No, you um, you really sort of made me think that there was it, it was really important to kind of... Glass. See this... <laughs> Actually, if you just drink out of that and I'll, I'll clean that. Thanks. See this perspective from the potential of, of of a of a different country, not just about the American version of things or the British version of things. And because this is a British story, I think it was really important to to tell that story from from Chile or from yeah. a different country as well. Because that's you know, like you say, there's a sort of maybe we concentrate a lot in the on the Western world, and there's not really any focus on yeah, it's, on it's these other stories that exist out there. I think it's... excuse me while I drink water from junk. <laughs> As you do, um, I think it's important not 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 just because it's a story from a, a different place, and oh, I think first of all it's important not to see it as something exotic. Yeah, no, it isn't. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. because uh, sometimes, we, um, especially because I'm South American, people are like, "Oh my God, you're so exotic!" And I'm like, yeah, yeah. "Yeah, but my history is not exotic, and it happened everywhere." Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's important to take that that story as a okay, this is what happened. That's what it is. Let's 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 try to pick up the pieces of what we lost when that happened. Not not the horribleness because that that's that's done. Mm. But what is it that we lost? Um, it's it's it, it always mesmerizes me the amount of things that the the um, Aboriginals of South America, not just of Chile, had in their own culture that we've we've lost completely. And it's like okay, that that's that's something important to yeah. rescue, yeah. because we don't realize that by pushing shamefully something of our past down, there's something in us that we're repressing yeah. as a society. Mm. Um, so you may think like, oh, okay, if if I don't acknowledge my Aboriginal past, it doesn't do anything to me. It does in a subconscious level. It does. And if it does it to you, it does it to your family. And if it does it to your family, it's a society. So you have a whole country. Has, that has to repress memories of whatever past it was. Mm. So I'm not saying, oh, let's bring these stories and, oh, you Spanish are evil. No, it happens. It's history. Let's try to pick up those things that we lost from the Aboriginals that perhaps we should embrace as a society. Yeah. And I think you know, that's what you're sort of trying to say in the story, really, isn't it? Which is just... Yeah. Right. And, and also to remember, um, especially in the, in the case of Hanekeo, because it's a woman, remember their names, we, we usually tend to forget about, it's like, oh yeah, no, they, they did that, they were great. Who were they? Mm. Well, they were a group of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had names, and they're the hard to pronounce, perhaps. But, um, yeah, especially when it comes to women, we know all the male warriors, the Mapuche ones, the, the, the important ones, we know them. Females? <laughs> forgotten. They're all um, forgotten. Yeah. So, it's like, no, remember her name. She did something, and it's, it's good that she's got a name. And also just the, the sort of taking that to modern day and, and to the context of this, is it really about, like, you've got a name as well, the people who are watching it, and that you've got a history and a story to tell, and that yeah. you look back, look back 
figure out who you, you know, don't be scared to look back and see who you are and be interested in that. I suppose it's more about interest levels sometimes with younger people today, sort of learning a little bit about their past and discovering that yeah, as well. Yeah, and, and also to question it. Like, I, yeah. I grew up in a very sheltered family, very religious and so I grew up, all my books said something very specific in school until I was 18 and all the history I learned was very specific and then I went to university and my mind mm. exploded mm. because suddenly I realised this is not the world that I grew up in and either you embrace it or you shun it and you're like, no, 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 I hate that and I embrace it and, and you have to be curious about it it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I've been taught this let me just, you know, if you're interested, yes, keep on, but read yeah. Read, because there's so much out there that you don't know. And even it might not be what you think it should be, but if it gives you a different opinion, just read the opinion. If it's not yours, it doesn't matter. At least but... you know the opinion. Exactly. Yeah. All right, thank you. I mean, do you... Where, where, have you got another project on? Are you doing anything going forward? I think you, I saw that you've been doing, in COVID, you've been doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of stories. <laughs> we did a lot of the play that went online. Yes, under the, the, um, the show must go online. Show, show must go yes, online, sorry. Which is a Shakespeare thing, which is really fun. Which I love. I think I saw your Henry V. Yeah. I think I, we talked about that. I think I actually saw that it was one. super fun. Um, um, I did um, another commission for the German Street Theatre, which we're doing bedtime story. Bed Bedtime stories. Sure. Um, it's not much of a bedtime story, mine. Uh, it's 15 years or, or older. <laughs> it's what time? Uh, 15 years or older. Oh, yeah. Mine is not for children. Just going going case. with the rules that you had on yeah, this, you yeah, brought that you to this. No, no, it's good. You brought us because we were originally six to ten, and because we decided to work with you, it was like, okay, we're going to go ten and up, just yeah. to kind of bring. So it I said up. fifteen or older. Important um, to tell the right story, yes, though. I yes, think. very um, important. So, but are you? We're going to go back to the real world one day. Two, I know, I'm two I know. weeks off a haircut. Uh, God, <laughs> yes. Um, so at the, at the moment, I'm sort of seeing what, what happens. Theatres are still closed. Yep. Uh, and we don't, and I do know that, I mean, the big ones are going to go back to whatever season they had envisioned yep. last year. So there's a lot of backlog and all of those plays have been mostly cast. Mm -hmm. So most actors are like, mm, yeah. what are we going to do? Um, but um, because Edinburgh is still on at the minute. Apparently it is. It is, because um, I booked tickets to go. So <laughs> Apparently out, it is. I, I don't have... The thing is, it's also quite tricky. It's like, okay, I'm going to put something in Edinburgh. Will it happen? So it's it's also it's also that. So yeah, I'm I trying to... Um, Besides starting to train again... Which is it's it's hard going back to the circus after this yeah. this long. Um, I'm doing a project that is is going out last next week in Spitalfields, but it's just audio. So you get my my voice, and you go around and they tell you stories about what happens in houses. Brilliant. So you're like blah blah blah. And he's like oh she lives there. And it's like it's it's make believe of course, but yeah, it's quite nice because it's on your own. It's on your phones. Did you come up with that yourself? Or? No no no. I'm working with a company called Twenty Seven Degrees. And there's different like storytellers and how, how the stories interact. Amazing. Um, so that's quite nice. And then I'm trying, trying to do just my own work and see and, and, until this whole thing starts moving and then I can start auditioning for more things because at the moment it's only film. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't been able to get my foot into film yet. <laughs> it's not an easy industry. <laughs> One day. Yeah, you'll get there, I'm sure. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you very for your much. Time. Yes. Um, and your epi um, Constanza's episode is episode four. Um, but I'm afraid I don't know the date, so. Because <laughs> I didn't look it up beforehand. <laughs> Definitely in May. Okay, thank you. Thank you.